Hi, friends. Well, I've been observing something that I think You know, it's it's a it, I wouldn't call it a constant. I call it a recurring experience, periodically recurring. And in simplest terms, I think I'm beginning to see how my what I would call avoidance mechanism works. It's like a is a particular emotional quality to me and to the way the world appears to me when I'm somehow in avoidance. And I think, you know, this is clearly connected to my um, ongoing, what I'm affectionately calling my existential crisis, which I don't want to say that in a way that over dramatizes what's happening. And at the same time, I actually think that in the moments when I'm really open and available to what's showing up, that's really what's happening. There was, I had some thoughts coming through this morning. You know, every once in a while, I just have this narrative playing in the back of my mind. And it's almost like I'm listening to the radio of spiritual insight. The spiritual insight channel is just running in my mind. And funny enough, it can be playing in the background. And it's kind of like that thing of a TV being on in the house and nobody's watching it. It can be going on and I can still not be listening. <laughs> I'm sort of semi-conscious of it. Like I hear it and I'll even have like explicit phrases come through my awareness and like for example the one that's showing up right now and so it's funny because I had thought of this um, I had I had I had this was very explicit in my mind a little while ago but I was thinking of it as something that I might say rather than something that I might receive for myself as applying to myself but there was this moment when I heard a voice in my head saying, the things we avoid, we go into avoidance when we are faced with facts or reflections about ourself that seem to destroy our sense of self. In other words, things about ourselves that we are not prepared to receive. We, we, we either can't integrate the information because it overwhelms us or we're simply not willing to. And I think, you know, what, what shows up even as I just talk this through is, you know, Sadhguru's um, it's not really an admonition, it's more of a an invitation where he essentially says the only thing required for transformation is willingness. That's it. That's everything. And in moments when 
avoidance shows up, and I would now call this a phase where avoidance is at play, it's really important and really helpful to remember that willingness is all it takes. We don't need anything. We don't need information. We don't need resources. All we need is willingness. There's an aspect to me of the, when I, when I face the things that threaten me, that threaten my ego's sense of self. And I've talked about this in the last couple of days, you know, how I, um, I, I've even created a self-image around spiritual practice, around trans transformation. This process, a process of transformation that I've been working on and become invested in, and it and it's like that. I, I, I look at the film strip of that in my past, and it looks like it, it, it's, it's a part of who I am. It's a part of who I think I am. So when, you know, <laughs> new, new information comes to light and reveals that it's actually an avoidance mechanism, that's hard to receive. That challenges my sense of self. And I go into avoidance, and in avoidance, I think that what is required of me by the universe is something I don't have. That's maybe the like the capstone hallmark signature of avoidance. It's trying to convince us that we need something that we don't have in order to transform. And it's both deeply discouraging because we feel disempowered and it's at the same time as it's deeply discouraging, there's a comfort in it. There's a kind of solace that we can take, we can take refuge in that because if there's something we need that we don't have, then we're not responsible for transform for art for transforming. Then I would transform, I really would, but I don't have this. So clearly I can't. Sorry, universe. I just have to wait a little longer. That's what my voice sounds like when I'm in avoidance to in my brain. It's, can you imagine? Can you imagine living in here? So, yeah. All of that is, I think I'm deliberately keeping my, trying to keep my own nose to the grindstone on this because there's clearly a step to be taken and, and it does feel existential. However, much, um, you know, privilege and, and abundance and amazingness I experience in my life, and it's a lot. None of that, again, that's like, none of those, those are all, that's all, that's all finite. Those are all finite things. They don't give me transformation. They don't, and, and they don't, and they don't function as an effective refuge from transformation for very long. I think that may be why, 
you know, people always say like, no amount of money is ever enough. You know, no matter how rich you get, you always want more. Well, that's because subconsciously we're hoping that the amount more that we envision being the, the amount we need right now, that amount more is going to get us to infinity. Right? If I if I'm a if I have ten million dollars, well maybe when I have twenty million dollars, I'll be happy. I'll be ultimately fulfilled. Well, guess what? Twenty million dollars looks an awful lot like ten million dollars. And maybe though when I get to fifty million dollars, right? And if we're sitting somewhere around like, well, I don't know, I make thirty five thousand dollars a year. Maybe when I make eighty thousand dollars. I'll be fulfilled, you know? There's always that, it's, it's, it, it's these kind of incremental um, aspirations that somehow they've been, they become laced with the promise of infinity. But that's not, but they're not infinity and they never will be. And so I think that's what I'm expressing when I come to this feeling of there's something I'm missing before I can transform. I just need that special sauce. I just need that. Schutzpah. I just need that confidence. I just need that skill. That, that I, I just need to raise my skills. I just need the right marketing <laughs> it's endless and i think that what i'm coming around to and where i kind of started is that in avoidance there's actually a massive opportunity for recognition because If I can identify, well, you know, not it's it's not the, the question is not what do I think I need, because that would just be that would just put me on the hunt for some internal psychological fixation that is not the point, and that you know it might be nice to identify it and be like okay I can let that go, but I don't think that that's how transformation happens. I think transformation happens by knowing and simply deciding I know I don't need anything in order to transform. I know that I am now ready, right now, in this moment. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. I might be a little daunted. But daunted is better than confused. We have to confuse ourselves to be in avoidance. Avoidance has to be, we, we have to obscure our own vision in order to be in avoidance. I mean, that's almost the definition of avoidance. We look away, we put shit in the way of our vision so we don't have to see those things that challenge our deepest sense of self. But willingness to simply be who we are, where we are, That can happen any time. Thanks. Much love. Appreciate you.